Does the material exist that does not give off harmful substances, is wear resistant and durable at the same time, pleasant to the touch? Yes, such a material does exist, say Ukrainian manufacturers. The craft of manufacturing the treatment of animal hide has been around for at least 13,000 years, but the material has not lost its practicality and is the today the basis for various tannery technologies. Velour, Morocco leather and chagrin are just a few processing examples. In production, natural hide is called the dermis of animal skin, which can retain its structure after chemical treatment. Also, the physical properties of such material can be changed depending on its ultimate purpose. There is shoe leather, glove leather, clothing leather and furniture leather. They differ by their physical and mechanical properties and how they react to friction. Furniture leather must be resistant to abrasion so that it does not change its color. That is, there are slightly different technologies and chemical solutions than those used for shoe leather. The same goes for glove leather. It has different elasticity, physical and mechanical properties and thickness, respectively. In ancient times, people treated hides with stone scrapers. The hides hardened when they dried up, so they had to be kneaded by hand to soften them. One of the most famous Ukrainian folk tales is devoted to Mykola Kozhemyako. According to the epic, he became so strong through his work that he was able to harness a dragon and plow furrows on it all the way to the Black Sea. In today's leather industry, batches of hides are softened in drums for various periods of time, depending on their variety. In those times, ancient masters noticed that greasy hide became softer when kneaded. For that reason, the masters began basting hide by adding lard to the process. It turned out this process of larding was efficient and easy, that is, has been preserved in the technique to the present day. The technology incorporated adding fat, which gives the effect of repelling moisture. Modern tanning is done in a combined way by combining metal salts, chrome, aluminium, iron, and synthetic wood acids in the solution. In short, practically the compact Mendeleev area table of elements. Different solutions are used for each stage of preparation of a specific semi-finished or finished leather. When semi-finished leather is ready, it is dyed. In ancient times, natural dyes were used. Oak bark gave a reddish tinge, walnut shells a brown tinge, berberry and alder bark a black tinge, and willow a gray tinge. Today, leather is dyed in fashionable shades using artificial dyes. Trendy colors are blue, brown, tortoise, and pink. Although, some 30 years ago, only one color was dominant and in trend – black. Thirty-five years ago, I came to work at the factory. I was 18 at the time. We only worked with black then. I'm so pleased to say that today we're making such semi-finished leather. It is called wet blue and we can dye it any color – red, beige, yellow and even carrot orange. We can do any color. Here, in the dryer, you can see the full picture, the entire spectrum and shades of colors that we currently produce. Semi-finished wet blue is sometimes referred to as tanned or wet skin, which is associated with the peculiarities of its production. The hide is tanned but not dried completely. It is only squeezed a bit. This creates the unique effect of light dampness, though in reality the leather is dry. Further along the tanning process, the material is treated with a chromium reagent and the hide takes on a bluish shade. Then it can be dyed with any color of choice in such drums. The resulting semi-finished wet blue is of very high quality and is highly valued all over the world. When the first dyeing process is complete, the skin dries out on a conveyor. Then it is followed by another process, after which the front side assumes a finished look. Prior to that, the hides are split in half. The thing is that the thickness of the front side of top notch hide must be between 1.5 and, and 3 mm. The excess is cut off. But it does not go to waste. The soft lower part of the hide is used to make velour. It is when the semi-finished product is brought to the velour state through a special gringing process. We use foreign, mainly Italian and Turkish equipment. And since we use foreign technology, our leather is technically no worse than Turkish or Italian leather.
And those are not just empty words as Turkish technologists work at Ukrainian factories and they are masters that know what good top quality leather is. I have 25 years of experience. It was interesting to me because I love my profession. So I came here to raise Ukrainian leather to a higher level. I do not need Turkish leather. My goal is to make leather that is higher in quality than Turkish leather and sell it around the world, even in Italy. For now, Ukraine exports only semi-finished products to Italy, although it is successfully sold in other countries of the world. Ukrainian-made wet blue leather is perfect for making jackets and footwear. Such tent leather can be used in accessory production for suitcases, briefcases, belts and handbags. We deliver all over Ukraine. We ship to Lviv, Dnipropetrovsk, Kharkiv and other cities in the country. Basically, we ship to all major cities and suburbs. We are currently developing export to Belarus and Moldova and hope to open a branch in Romania. Ukrainian wet blue is high quality and not too thick. Such leather is easy to tailor and it is durable, so it does not stay in warehouses for long. I know our clients who work for Italy in Europe, but they sell finished products from our leather. So our Ukrainian leather gets to European market either as semi-finished or finished products. The list of important countries could have been longer as Ukraine has enough production capacity. There are specialists and equipment with which we can make a lot of quality leather and tailor a lot of top-notch products. And the demand is there, but it's turned out not as easy as we thought. Twenty years ago, we produced about 3 billion square decimeters of natural leather and supplied raw materials to the entire small leather goods industry of Ukraine, not only for footwear, but also leather haberdashery, gloves and hats being the most popular items. One of the main reasons for the decrease in leather production is the reduction in livestock. It was therefore decided to buy hides for leather abroad, but, but finished products are always more expensive, so while the profits of a leather factory are not high, they are sufficient to survive in this highly competitive market. Today the capacity of our factories allow for the production for more than 50,000 square meters of leather per month, but we want to increase our volumes, for example, up to 100,000 square meters. Footwear factories are also interested in increasing production volumes since they buy more than half of the natural leather for their products from Ukrainian manufacturers and then they export their finished products to other countries. Europe annually imports more than 2 billion pairs of shoes. We export 6 million pairs to Europe, but that is not much at all. We could increase this number several times. Indeed, we have the capacity to export from 30 to 50 million pairs of shoes. Indeed, we have the capacity to export from 30 30 to 50 million pairs of shoes to markets in the European Union. But modern technologies are advancing by leaps and bounds, which makes it extremely difficult to distinguish products made of natural leather from synthetic products. It can be distinguished by the edges. If the structure is fleecy, then it is natural leather. If it is lint-free, porous and has some kind of thread sticking out, then that is a synthetic leather. Because of what, manufacturers of synthetic shoes fold the edges to hide them. If the edges are not folded, then the product is most probably made of natural leather. It is also worth noting that the so-called pressure-treated leather has nothing natural in it at all. Such leather is produced by pressing, using specialized equipment with rollers and spinnerets. Such leather has absolutely nothing in common with natural leather. Pressed leather is in fact 100% synthetic leather. But what do the producers themselves say? Is there a difference between synthetic and natural leather? Designers say that everyone has their favorite material that helps them to come up with new models. Предпочтение, конечно же, в натуральной коже, она более долговечная. 
Certainly, I prefer natural leather. Why? Because it is more durable and it absorbs moisture and air. Of course, synthetic footwear is more affordable, and seeing as prices are soaring through the roof, synthetic is becoming more popular than natural. To each his own, but in the world of luxury, experts say leather products remain popular, especially those made of exotic leather. Eel, also known as ocean silk, alligator, tingray, or ostrich. Such products are already exported in small volumes by small Ukrainian enterprises. Therefore, in spite of the competition on the leather good markets, industry experts are optimistic about the potential of new Ukrainian startups emerging in this market. The main thing is to take into account what kind of leather products are preferred and are trendy in which countries. And in this particular case, Ukrainian tenors are not short on experience by any stretch of the imagination.